everyone, I'm Mishkam. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So, in today's episode of Our Life Now and Forever, we are going to be continuing with the newest update. Um, I don't know how much is left. I would not be surprised if this episode is probably just like 15 to 20 minutes. Because normally whenever they add new scenes, it's never that long. Or maybe that's just me. I don't know. But... We'll see, but before we get started, make sure to subscribe button and share this video with your friends so they can find out about my amazing channel just like you have right now. So, yeah, let's get into it. I hope you enjoy. <sighs> Alright, with the way Granny daintily placed her hands in her lap, she really did look like a queen on her throne. You had to wonder, was she a kind queen or an evil queen? Why don't we let the two young friends play in the backyard while us old folks stay here to talk? You wouldn't go far, would you, Tamarack and Mishka? We'd, and we come get you when it's time to leave. Would that be acceptable, Opal? It was weird to have somebody call Mama by her name, even if it was her name. She was Mama. That would be excellent. Or that would be great. Excellent suggestion. Tamarack's bag stopped jingling. That was the only reason you heard her intent whisper. Come on, Mishka. Neither of you had officially been given permission to leave before she zoomed out the room and around the corner in the same direction her opa had vanished to. He hadn't been the only one who wanted to get away. Don't run in the hall, please. Knowing well that the warning wasn't going to change anything, Mrs. Buman sighed in re resignation. Ha, huh, fine. No one listens to a word I say. You went after Tamarack, stepping carefully through the unfamiliar house. Though there wasn't anything in your way, the furniture and knickknacks were all pushed against the walls. The only place that was clear of clutter was the center of the hall. Past the living room, there were doors to unknown place places and another hole in the wall that went to a kitchen. You spotted Tamarack at the very end of the house. She yanked open a back door and bounded through. She left it wide open, a portal of light and gold inviting you through the dark. When you came to stand at the edge, you found out Tamarack had waited for you to catch up at the bottom of a couple uneven wooden steps. They were bent inward, like after being pressed down so many times, they stayed sunk. It was your turn to leave a mark on that impression. One step, then another, and the both of you were outside. Invisible ribbons of perfume melted off your clothes, unable to live out in the fresh, freezing air. Just like Chu's backyard, Tamarack's house had no fence around it. There was no way to tell when the yard step in the forest began. It was even more impossible to see where the forest ended. It might go for, for forever. That was all that was the same for the two places, though. Instead of Chu's secret hideout, there was a fancy table with two chairs. Mm, sorry. That looked like it was there for Tamarack's grandparents. And hanging from a thick branch was a rope-strung tire swing. That part of the place had to be there for their, for their granddaughter. Woo! Tamarack colored a cry of freedom and skipped down the small stone path, never touching a blade of grass. She hefted the messenger bag over her shoulders, chucked it aside with a thunk, and flunked herself through the hole of the tire. All you could see of Tamarack then were her little legs kicking up in the air and her arms spread out past the width of the tire so she was floating. The swing slowly twisted on its rope until it brought her eager face around. Hi, Mishka. <laughs> you grinned at her and went over. Tamarack's uptight legs snapped down as she plung the t tips of her boots into the soft earth below. It was supposed to stop the tire from doing another spin, except she couldn't stop it all the way. The turning swing twisted her to the side. Tamarack held firm, jerking futilely in the tire to center it again. But none of that meant she couldn't keep talking to you. She happily explained how it all came to be. Omi and Opa got this just for me. They're too old to use a tire swing. Um. You and Chu have the best backyards. Thanks. The praise puffed her up proudly. If she got too much bigger, she might not fit inside the tire. But then she wiggled her body and dug her shoes even, in even harder trying to get out. Let's play something. Um... <sighs> Before she could, you started to climb up on the tire. You managed to get your footing in the tire, only stepping on Tamarack a little bit and pulling yourself all the way over. The tire swing swung and as you and twisted as you got both your legs over the side. From down below, Tamarack squealed. Your feet are in my face. <laughs> Smell my shoes. <laughs> you, 
You prodded at the squirming girl at your mercy and you didn't have any. She screeched giddily, twisting away from the attack and batting your legs in self-defense. The two of you giggled and let the tire spin you slowly around and around. No matter which way it faced, you could peer down at her and she could glance up to see you. The excitement of the swing eventually settled. You breathed in deeply through your nose, the air stung just a little, but mostly was nice. Tamarack wasn't talking or laughing or squealing like she normally was, and the two of you were alone together. That also didn't happen a lot. If you wanted, you could ask her something you've been wondering about. Um, you decided not to. Then Tamarack wriggled around again. It made the tire sway even more and you had to hold on tighter, but she wanted out. She plopped out the backside and landed in the, in the grass on her butt, but Tamarack immediately sprung to her feet and began to move further away from the swing. Something was happening or was about to happen. You got down from the swing and went after her. She pressed her fisted hand onto her hips and spoke without turning around. Tamarack's uh, fluttered, hair fluttered and inimitably. With each word, because she nodded while talking, that made it look like a fluffy gold sheep was the one saying it. We better start soon. It's going to get dark. Start what? Finding some good stuff. There's a lot of it out there, you know. She reached down to collect her big bag, hooking it around her shoulder like normal. That's when she turned around and you were faced with Tamrak herself instead of the sparkly lamb side of her. Have you been to this place before? Not to this town. I only came here since when I moved yesterday. But uh, is this in, isn't this in like Oregon? That's what I remember. I think. I think Baxter says something about that. I don't know. From our life. Enter your formal home. I'm from. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say Michigan, because I have no clue what else to say. But I'm from Michigan. It's really, really far away. Really? That's amazing. And we're the same again. I haven't been here a long time either. But I've already learned a lot already about outside and everything. All the forests in the world are different. And some places don't even have forests. This one is great because there's mushrooms and rose hips and acorns and great rocks and more. I can show you good spots to find things since you're nearer to this forest than me. I'm gonna get everything before you even have a chance. <laughs> she gasped, but the air she sucked in worked and worked like a f inflating a balloon bigger. She glared even more confidently than before. Then I won't show you anything. <laughs> Good, I'll find your places anyway and better ones. At the same time, though, in opposite directions, you and Tamarack began your competing treasure hunts along the edge of the forest. In bushes at the base of trees, under rocks, across low-hanging branches, around fallen locks, nothing was left unexamined. When Tamarack found something worth saving, she placed it in on the widest, flattest stone in the path. That was to keep her fingers free to do more collecting. When you unearthed something worth taking with you, you left it on the lowest step instead. Your piles grew rapidly as the two of you dashed back and forth from the clearing near the house in the wilderness a few feet away. Just like in class, Tamarack was fully focused and squinting hard. She only ever stopped snooping to rub her tattered sleeve ends into her eyelids and kept going. Maybe dirt was getting in her eyes with how close she kept getting to the ground. And maybe bits of twigs, too, since she wasn't afraid to shove her head into the brush. <laughs> oh my god. Leaves stick is stuck in her hair. Same as the first time you'd ever seen her. As time passed, a shadow crept over the yard, and an obscuring sweater pulled over the body of the earth as it got colder. Like Tamarack's own sweater, it had left a few holes here and there that were easier to see through. You and Tamarack were first forced to limit your search to those rare spotlights. It wouldn't be possible to keep doing it for much longer. You glanced over at her. Um. Wait. Tamarack crouched in the grass and circled by darkness. Wait, that's actually a little too loud. Uh by darkness and trees she shone underneath a stream of pale evening sun a few strong waves rays hit her back giving the illusion of golden fairy wings seeing her there that way made so much more sense than when you saw her in school or her grandparents antique house that one was natural to tamarack being in nature even her name was kind of a tree when tamarack officially announced the end of her hunt the day was reaching its end too that was probably the only reason why she was stopping 
You declared to yourself a, su a successful and victorious result. Your treasure pile was better than hers. It had all the stuff you liked. All that was left was to... All that was left to do was to gather it up. That was easier to think than to do. You struggled to get each of the small, mostly round and valuables into your grasp. Termite couldn't scoop everything in her hands at one time. Pebbles and rose hips rolled out of her grasp and off the stepping stone. Aww. That was close enough for an impatient kid. Tamarack brushed to show, brushed over to show you what she managed to find and carry. This is what I got. She nudged her hands full to bursting with wonderful things even nearer. An acorn dropped to the ground. Here, take whatever you want. But that's yours and I already have a lot of it. I know, you have your own for yourself. You can take part of mine so you also have things to give away. Or maybe you'd want to share what you got and keep the ones I gave you. Or I give you. Something like that. You can share with your mom or my Omi and Opa or anybody. That's the fun. That's the most fun part. Oh, that was the answer to a puzzle you hadn't realized you were confused by. Tamarack said she went out into the woods all the time. She must have found enough things to fill her grandparents' entire house. Her granny would definitely not like that. She needed room for her own clutter. That was never a problem because Tamarack didn't hold on to the collection herself. She spread it out to everybody. So much for the competition then. It wouldn't have mattered if she had gotten more better things before you because she was ready to let you take it anyway. Well, you wouldn't have given up trying either, or trying, even if you knew that to begin with, and she wouldn't have either. Um, I want to share with you, too. The exchange couldn't be done smoothly. Neither of you had free hands to pass or pick up the presents. Tamarack settled for dumping part of her pile over the stuff you already had in your right hand, then you shook some of the finds in your left hand into her palms. When the trade finished, you had almost the had almost exactly the same amount of goods but it didn't feel the same you knew that in one hand you held the treasure you'd found with your own effort and in the other hand were gifts from your friend both were important for different reasons still grasping a loose connection oh my god connection collection of forest finds tamarack marched off to the side out of her backyard and into yours you went after her curiously i'm going to choose house he's going to be surprised Mm. You kept going more excited than before. You and Tamarack crunched through the long grass and a million leaves. The sidewalk in front of the houses was a half, was a big half circle, and the back of them curved like that too. When you got more around the bend, you could see your whole y entire yard. It was empty and growing wild. There was no fort or tire swing, no table with chairs, not even one little lantern with a burned out bulb. If you faced away from the house, you'd think you were in the heart of the woods. That was incredible. Your backyard was the forest itself. At the under end of the field, Chewie's fort could be seen towering in the distance. It encouraged Tamarack to shuffle ahead faster. The quicker steps jiggled her hands and that caused a few more pieces of her collection to rain down on her. Around her. God. You had to wonder why she took so much if she was going to lose half of it. That structure wasn't only a sign you were almost there. It was her destination. Tamarack went straight to the hideout. Then, there she arranged the entire collection in a new pile at the base of a climbing wall. Tamarack poked through the heap, pinching up an acorn there and a rose hip here, tucking each into her overall pockets without taking her eyes off her work. It took you a second to be sure, but she was gathering the things you'd given her. She had a good memory if you could remember what those looked like, though what was probably what probably was happening was she guessed what came from you by choosing things she didn't find herself. When her hands were free, she pressed them together. Her job was done. Mm. Um, you left Chu part of the treasures you found the ones Tamarack shared. The presents you left for Chu were carefully selected. You placed them in your own collection next to Tamarack's. What was left got stuffed into your bag for safekeeping. You had something else to share too, a candy. It wasn't possible to know if Chu would like any of the treats from Granny's house, the flavors, or the types. Because of that, you decided to give him just him the first one you managed to find the crevices of your clothes. Tamara giggled as the treat joined the array of items, becoming the crowning jewel. She recognized where it came from in an instant. You didn't think she'd tell on you, though. There was nothing left to do, and that's when Tamara spoke for the first time since you'd gotten to Chu's yard. Let's go. Chu is going to be home before dinner. He could catch us. Or his parents might see us. I've never talked to them. Who knows what they do? A thrill tingled over you, and you nodded. Right. You fled the scene of the crime. 
Or was it a crime if you leave new things instead of taking their stuff? It didn't matter. You weren't going to find out. The two of you went around the bend in a sprint, kicking up a whirl of leaves behind you. Not you or her looked back. Tara got past the stone pathway like it was the finish line to a race and crumbled into the grass laughing. But the giggles turned into achy yips when she landed all the way down. Ow, ow, ow. I fell on the rocks in my pocket. She laughed some more and ow more too, each one taking its fair turn. How did you forget they were there? You put them away one minute ago. I don't know. I just did. These two are so like, oh my god. <laughs> they're, they're like the best of friends. I love it. Tamarack rolled off her side to the settle on her stomach. She squished her big cheeks against her little fists and she kicked her feet in the air. The rubber boots flopped around on her feet. She looked up to you. Her smile puffed at the sides like it did a lot. It was an invitation to join her below. You did, stretching out on the cool lawn right in front of her. Chu cleaned up trash, and now he's going to get a surprise from the forest to think thanks to us. Even though the two of you were on the ground, your moves were as high as the sky. It was so cool and weird that you were playing in a friend's backyard. When did that happen? How did it happen? You moved into this town. Tamarack sprang out at you, and you'd pretty much been together since. Even your brains had gotten in sync because Tamarack started talking about the same thing. Mishka, of all the friends I have here, you're the best one. It still surprises you that you said that she said that. You had heard it before a long time ago when you first came to her house. If she was gonna say it again, you figured it would have happened way before, but she wanted to do it then. She kept going. We came to the same exact neighborhood almost at the same time and are the same age. We're both girls. You have fun outside and I do too. I've never ever met a kid who was just like me. That's important, that's serious. Tamarack had started shouting and then sucked in the loudness with a breath of him. What came next was low. You had to really listen to know. You and me are going to be be er, friends forever. <laughs> Those words were something more like a regular promise, more than a peaky promise, too. It was a swear. Not the kind of swear you get in trouble for, though. Yeah, and Chu, too. He's also the best. Mm hmm. Chu was good. Wait, actually, no. Wait. Best friends forever. <gasps> Tamarack friends in the <laughs> Oh my god. Her dark red eyes were two perfectly round apples hanging in a bushy tree of golden leaves they shone. The swing, the searching, the secret trip to choose house. Each were complete, and at that point, you were pretty sure Tamarack's final plan was to stay right there until grass grew around her. You uh, uh, you start eating your candies. You shredded the wrapper. It was so old, some of it completely fell apart. Ew. And then other bits were completely stuck to the candy. You peeled the trash away and popped it into your mouth. It was still candy no matter how ancient it was and it was yummy. It was that moment when a door creaked open and two smiling faces looked over the yard. Your mama and Tamarack's grandma came to, to get you. In a panic, you swallowed the candy and shoved your fist full of garbage into your pocket. It sat heavy in your stomach. But they never know that. Hi, Mishka. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we've got to get going. Aw, bye, Mishka. Bye, Tamarack. I'm going to stay outside. Sending a smile to Mama, you push yourself to your feet. Bye, Tamarack. Mrs. Buman didn't even question Tamarack remaining laid out on the grass. She left her granddaughter there and guided her guests in through the back door and up to the front one. Why couldn't you have gone around the hole? around the house instead of through it. It was too late to tell them that because it was already done when you'd realized it. Mrs. Beeman stopped at the entryway, opening the door and fitting herself into a rare opening between the furniture to clear a path. Your mom kept going past her nice and orderly. On the porch, mom halted and turned. The hostess had moved to stand in the doorway so they were face to face. It was good, so good to meet you two. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other often. Good day. Of course. Goodbye and thanks for the talk. Mrs. Buman nodded kindly and slowly pressed the front door of the door forward. Mama waved until she was doing it to a plank of wood. The door was shut. Then she let her hand drop and talk to you. Busy day, huh? But that was good. The words went high, a sound of relief instead of low, which would have been real com contentment. Uh, instead of just something good happening, it was more like when you avoid something bad happening. That was so good, but in a different way than if nothing had been at stake. Time to go. Except, before you left the Beeman port, something made you stop in your tracks. There was a stranger strolling into the cul-de-sac, rolling a bike along with them. It was almost as if the person was tall. Uh, wait. It was almost as long as the person was tall. The sight had a totally different impact on your mom. It pulled her forward. 
Oh, it's Mr. Lin. Mr. Lin, like Chu Lin? That was Chu's dad. Probably it could be an uncle or a way older sibling. Oh, hi. <laughs> he wore a pale green sporty jacket and also nice black dress pants. His hair was super neat, neat but styled in a fun way that most grown-ups didn't have. That kind of introduced him to you without needing to say a word. Mr. Lin, or who, whoever he was, was a real professional, but not at all strict about it. Though, wait, why did your mom already know that? How do you know him? What? We talked about him many times, and you know Chu, that's his father. Okay, Chu's dad it was. They didn't answer your real question. You racked your brain for the past conversations your mom was talking about. Nothing came up. Mom, no we haven't. Chu is the only Mr. Lin I've heard of here. Confused and screwed up her face. She was as convinced as that you knew as much as you were sure that you didn't. Wait, that's right. Suddenly, she laughed and pressed a hand to her cheek. I never called him by his name to you. It's the real estate person who helped us find our house. The real estate person? Memories of mom pacing around your old apartment, getting excited whenever the real estate person would call with news, played behind your eyes. That was Chu's dad on the other line the whole time. I've seen his picture. He has a website and he we've chatted over the phone. Yesterday was the first time we met in person. That's who I was waiting for to get our keys from. We'd arrived extra early and he couldn't break away from some of the appointments until that evening. You glanced away from your own parent to choose. It was easy to see how the two were related. They both looked really pleased with themselves and the whole world even when nothing was happening. Chu and Mr. Lin both liked bikes too. When you turned back to mom, she had a huge encouraging smile on her face. Let's see him over there. It'd be hard to move the bike for him to come to us. Mom's attention was split between gesturing for Mr. Lin to stop and getting you to go with her. One of her hands went up, the other went down. Hello. Chu's dad reined in on the moving bike and stood in place. Next, he waved. Hello, Miss Rose. What a coincidence running into you out here. Good seeing you again. It's nice to see you too. This is my daughter, Mishka. So she's the one. Hi, Mishka. Your real estate agent folded his arms and tilted his head down. The hair in front of his face fell away, letting you see him clearly. This is a big moment. I can finally introduce myself after hearing so much about you. From your mom, of course, but Chu has his own contributions. It feels like meeting a celebrity in person. <laughs> oh yeah, Chu had told, told you himself. He talked to his parents about what happened yesterday. Mr. Lin knew things about you from two different people. What did Chu tell you about me, you asked eagerly. <laughs> he chuckled warmly. Warmly. Warmly! Oh my god. Chu likes to talk, you might have noticed. Unless you ask him to keep a secret, or he could have guessed on his own that he shouldn't be sharing it. There likely nothing he hasn't said about his brand new neighbor. Thanks for finding his missing notes, by the way. That was nothing. The Mr. Lin adjusted his glasses in the topic of conversation. Welcome officially to the neighborhood. I wanted to come by, see how you were settling in, but I wasn't sure when would be a good time. I hope to catch both of you. There isn't a familiar car on the road. I'm guessing that it's yours, but the house is dark. Neither of you look to be around. Yes, yes, that's ours. I'm sorry you missed us. We were meeting the neighbors to the right. Tamara kindly invited Mishka and me to her home. Dorothea and, and we had a talk, and we very briefly saw Ernest passing by. Don't part. Don't apologize. That's perfect. If you get the chance to meet to visit the Beeman household or house, I'd say take it. And now you can come meet the other neighbors. Well, one other one. Um. Uh, you're already well acquainted with you, and we've said our, our hellos here. Do you have time to swing by? Personally, I'd love to introduce myself to Mrs. Lin. She was really only answering for herself. Your mom asked for your thoughts before deciding on meet on another meet and greet. Can we go see Chu's mom, Mishka? All right, we can check it out. Oh my god, we can spend time with Chu. <laughs> Thank you. We can stop by now. That's great. Give me just one. Um, just g give me just a minute. God. Mr. Lin patted the handle of the bike, bringing attention to it. That was something he needed to deal with. He cocked a set of wheels to move with an expert hand. He got across the road, up the curb, over the grass, and onto Chu's, also his entryway. Mama gradually made the same trip. She kept a lot of distance between her and the real estate man, not wanting to risk even the slam ch chance of getting in the way. You weren't scared of a bike and went ahead of Mom. Mr. Lin raped his knuckles on the white door of the red house. He busied himself during the way by tapping the bike handle instead of and humming a soft tune. So on though, was probably Chu's mom, opened it halfway to attend to a guest. The door was thrown all the way open the second the person realized who was there. Hello, honey. Hong? Did- Oh my gosh. <sighs> I need Google Translate. <laughs> God. 
Okay. Hong. Hong. Okay, I just say it right. Hong, did you lose your key? With an unapologetic laugh, Mr. Lin stretched past the bike's front wheel to greet his wife by kissing her cheek. No, I wanted you to come over. I figured this would be the quickest way. Our new neighbors are here. Hmm? Mrs. Lin peered further on, and there were the neighbors, you and Mama. Still staring ahead, Mrs. Lin stepped forward just in time to bump into her husband. He'd made a move to get into the fenced area of the porch. Mrs. Lin gasped, and the bike shuddered a metallic cry. Mrs. Lin hastily grabbed the seat cushion to steady it. She leaned to the right for her next attempt to pass, so did Mr. Lin. Uh, um... Mr. Lin settled on pressing his back to the little wall by the door while holding up the bike against himself. Mrs. Lin finally managed to shuffle by and reach the sidewalk, but not before muttering bashfully, Sorry, sweetheart. It's no trouble going. Mrs. Lin let out a breath to recompose her normal self after the unintentional dance with her husband and her husband's bike. Her clothes were light blue. Her hair was blue, too. Way, way darker, though. Whenever she lifted her legs to walk, the creases in her dress moved like flower petals in a breeze. There was something so peaceful about it, even her voice drifted along gently. I'm Mrs. Something Lynn. If you're the new neighbors, you must be Miss Opal and Mish Rose. Is that true? Yes, precisely. Mom reached forward, offering a shake. Mrs. Lynn grasped your mama's hand with one of her own and covered the top of it with her other hand. The two didn't exactly shake. Really, they squeezed each other for a second. They were hugging, but with hands. After Mrs. Lynn carefully unwrapped her fingers from Mom, her gaze drifted downwards. Mrs. Lynn curled into a blueberry bog, bringing her chin to her knees. The edge of her spotless dress brushed the grass, but it brought her to eye level with you. Hi. <laughs> she held up her hand for you to take, too. You never would have guessed that was going to happen. Most adults didn't act like you were a grown-up, or that kids could be treated the same way as a grown-up was. <laughs> oh, my God. You clapped your hand in a side five. That was saying hi with a hand, too. Mrs. Lynn's wrist bent on the impact. She hadn't been prepared for such a blow, but it was fine. She kept smiling. That's a fun way to greet someone. It is nice to meet you, Mishka. And then she pushed off the ground and stand up perfectly straight in one fluid motion. You've seen how much Shu and his dad were alike because of their matching confidence. It was the same thing with his mom, except you needed a little imagination to make the connection. If Mrs. Lynn was put on super ultra fast forward, it looked like it looked a lot like how Chu treated people. But now you've seen everyone who lived on the street plus some extras. All the kid, all the other kids were about your age or two or three years older. For the adults, it was a lot trickier to put together ages, except for Tamarack's grandparents. They were absolutely the most old. <laughs> when it came to non-grandparent grown-ups, two of them could be one year apart or have a 10-year difference with almost no way to tell. 10 years with the length of your entire life. It was impossible to imagine having that much time just being an adult. Your best conclusion was that Mrs. Murray would probably be the youngest grown person, and your mom and Chu's parents were somewhere in the middle. You wonder how your mom felt finding out there were two people around her age, maybe in the neighborhood. Was that a big deal to adults, too? Was she going to make friends with them like you did with Chu and Tamarack? Could someone her age be friends with someone who had been around as long as Granny and Mr. Buman, or did that not work? Grandparents were double adults, super adults. Mama kind of acted like they were regular grown-ups, as respectful to them as kids had to treat her. But one way or another, Mama was going to have to make a life in Golden Grove along with these people, too. I'm sorry to be the last one in my family who came to meet you in person. Don't worry about that. Hong had a huge advantage, all things considered. Your mom quirked her lips good-humoredly. Also, Chu also beat you to it, but that and that was a closer race. Oh, a joke. A teasing one, even. Mom made an attempt at being less professionally polite. You watched on this adult interaction, wondering how it turned out. It seemed to go pretty well because Mrs. Lin laughed. He was very excited. There's never been another child next door until now when we have two, when two have come at the same time. Well, I hope Mishka and I lived up to expectations. I'd like to make a good impression on the magnemious Chu Lin. The other Mr. Lin came over and joined the conversation, showing his now free hands with a shrug. He had gotten the bulky bike in, in, into the porch jail behind the mailbox so he could stop pulling it around for a second. Chu had been out with friends since school ended, so we've yet to hear about what happened when he popped by your house in the morning. But I'm certain the new neighbor, Miss Opal Rose, will get a glowing report for dinner. Thank you. I'm usually the one giving performance reviews. Who knew it was so nerve-wracking to be on the receiving end? Oh, yes. Terrifying. <laughs> 
That was the type of humor your mom liked. Dealing with people was her whole job. She could play pretend that it was something challenging. You didn't know Chu's mom well enough to be sure if that was also a joke or if she meant it seriously. But you guessed anyway. She sounded actually scared of the idea. Plus, Mr. Wen went for an earnest answer instead of messing around. He had to know best. You ladies have nothing to fear. No one's going to give you a failing mark, trust me. And I can already report that my son is entirely stuck on your daughter. <laughs> now that is wonderful news because my Mishkas are on the move at your boy. <laughs> that was right. Chu and you were already great friends. The final neighbor you spoke you met spoke sweetly and on behalf of the entire family. We'll have to give them plenty of time to nurture their friendship. Oh, you mean relationship? Mrs. Lin slipped her arm around Mrs. Lin slipped her arm around Mr. Lin's. They were unified physically and legally and in this opinion. I'm glad we're all on the same side here. Chu's parents were as cool as he was. Now I need to apologize myself for cutting this introduction short. We have to get home. There's more packing to do before the day is over. I absolutely do want to speak another more another time though. Oh that's fine. Yes, we understand completely. I imagine it's a big job. Getting a new house in order always is, even when it hasn't been left to collect dust. A bit. Luckily, it looks as if most of the furniture already there will be worth keeping after a good, scrub after a good scrubbing and polishing. It's that so. I thought that'd be a case. It was quite a perk of the property. Seems they had good advice picking a good a location. <laughs> Man, that was said with a sly smile and a side eye to her husband. Mrs. Lynn had a streak of charm, too. Thanks, honey. Mr. Lin put a hand on the back of his head and one in the corner of his glasses before leaning back to laugh. He wanted to make sure nothing fell off, you guess. But if you do need help with any heavy lifting, you're welcome to let me know. I'll call Yi. She was a gymnast in college and can do more pull-ups than me. Suddenly, Mrs. Lin's dark eyes went saucier. Saucer. Why? She couldn't get them back to normal size, so Mrs. Lin... Slap them shut instead. There wasn't a way to get the rosiness off her cheeks. That was the biggest reaction you've seen from Chu's mom so far. She was the one who started the praising. Hong, please. We should both help if it's needed. Your mom got a chuggle out of the exchange, too. There you have it. The lens are at your service. Thank you for the offer. Mm, thank you for coming, Opal Mishka. You're mo both welcome over any time. Goodbye. Good evening. Bye. With a come-along gesture angled your way, Mom turned to leave. The two of you followed the sidewalk around to the center of the street. From there, you stared up at the towering building from underneath, or from under the long shadow it cast. After walking down the road into town, attending the school, and visiting with the neighbors, this place was where you were returning to at the end of a long day. A thought struck your heart as much as your brain. You were going to be seeing that view for a long time. No matter how unfamiliar each sight, sound, and person in Golden Grove was then, one day it was going to be normal. That was kind of scary. Like, time itself could force you to accept something you never wanted through sheer force. As if the world or your mom was trying to prove that trying to prove this would be a regular thing for you, mom didn't pause breathlessly at the welcome mat like she had the day before. She just took out the same black spiral keychain loop she'd always used and picked one of the keys off it to unlock the door. Mom put that house key in the coil? Guess so. Then she went in, not doubting that you do the same you did she hit the lights for all your musing about normalness and regularly when you glanced around the living room it was a bit too familiar you'd been at school for hours seen and done so much while your mom was supposed to be here unpacking so why did it exactly look the same almost exactly the stuff you had slept on had been put away so there wasn't the same mountain of boxes piled unevenly in a corner the same sheets draped over the furniture the dust you wiped down the night before was the only hint that you hadn't transported back in time to when you first saw the place. Um. Okay, Mom, what were you doing this whole time? Now that is a good question. A sing-songy cadence carried her leading words. It wasn't the living room I spent the afternoon making livable, and since it wasn't that, can you guess what it is? My room. That's right. <laughs> then your new room is ready for you. It's clean and dust-free, and I've already filled in some of the shelves. All you need to do is put out your bedding, make sure I didn't miss any of your things, and enjoy. Oh, you weren't going to be able to put it off. You'd have to face where you'd be stuck in this place. But you didn't blame Mom. She was trying to be nice. The lack of excitement was clear on your face. You weren't jumping out, jumping up and down for joy or anything. Your mom smiled encouragingly, trying one more time to frame it as a good thing. Go check it out. I'll be in my own new room. I've gotten a couple hours of work into dressing that up, but it's not ready quite yet. 
Mom's pair of cranberry eyes wandered around, taking in the curtains of the first floor. Ideally, neither of us will have to sleep in the living room tonight. That'd be kind of funny, but okay. You and Mom kept walking up together up, up the stairs, and the hall your past parted ways. Your room was the one closest to the stairs. The master bedroom was farthest away. The room in between those remained a mystery. You'd never lived in a house with extra space before. The apartments from before barely fit the two of you. Anything was possible now. Grasping the cool metal handle you pressed down, the knob twisted until it was pointing straight to the floor, and... It was kind of stuck. You had to give the door a real push to get it free from the frame. Once it had gotten past the initial jam, it moved with ease. So you went stumbling into your room. Oh! Hello, you're about to enter the room decorating screen. At the start of every step, except for step four, you'll be able to add personal touches to your bedroom. The older you get, the more control you'll have over your space. As a kid in step one, you can choose between different beddings and some smaller possessions like toys and decorations. The furniture overall arrangement, wallpaper, and so on can't be altered in this step. To choose between options, you select one of the four areas and then choose the elements you want to have for that area. After that, go back and you can choose a different area to customize or in the decorating section. We hope you'll enjoy settling in and making the space on your own. Oh, go to bed. Oh, is there a pink one? Oh, you can do a canopy. A helmet. Oh, I like the... Wait. I like, I like that. I like this. Helmet. I wonder... I guess that's for like athletic wear. Crayon, stuffed bird, stuffed elephant, sure. Um, sure. <laughs> oh wait, clothes on the ground? No. Yeah, that looks fine. Done. Oh, our room looks so cute. And done. It was wonderful. You were so happy it almost made you sad. No matter how much you disliked this house, this little corner of it was good in your books. It had taken until nighttime to get your things just how you wanted them. You stepped into a corner to admire your handiwork. The floor space of the room was bigger than your last one. The ceiling was a lot lower, though. It sloped like a slope at the roof of the house, and the windows were angled towards the treetops and sky. You thought you had something really special there. And then there was a knock in a voice. The tilting roof caught the sounds and directed them straight down into your ears. Misha, can I come in? Yeah. The hangle jiggled and jerked. The door was resistant to Mama opening it too. She figured it out though and let herself in. Hello, dear. Not so discreetly, Mom surveyed your efforts at decorating. You watched her just as closely, eager for someone to appreciate your room as you did. It looks great in here. You did a good job unpacking. Exactly, it was a great room. I'm pretty finished myself, but it's late. Let's take a break from that and chat. It's been a long day all around and back and forth. It lasted forever. I need some vacation, not a break. I hate to disappoint, but not, we're not entirely done yet. Your mom folded her arms and even more, and her mouth pinched too. We should talk about how things will be once I'm back to work. I won't be able to drop you off or pick you up from school most days. I'm sorry. It does seem common for kids in this town to walk or ride bikes to class at least. Um, you had a bike. That was another thing. Mom made extra short, got moved to the house along with your backpack. She must have known it could have come in handy. It'll be up to you if you'd rather go on foot or use your bike. You got to see the way there and you shouldn't ever be the only one on the path. You weren't scared to do stuff without her, but you liked spending time with mom. It would have been fun to go together at least sometimes. Moving sucked. Accepting the inevitable, you nodded. All right, that's one matter of 10 or two. Here's part two. What to do after you make it back from school? You'll be done with your class a good few hours before I'm off the clock. Mrs. Beeman and I were talking while you were outside. She offered to keep an eye on you while I'm away. She reti she's retired and insisted it'd be no trouble. That can mean you go to Tamarack's house for the afternoon, or it can be Mrs. Beeman popping in every now and then to check on you if you're playing at home or outside. Tamarack is already your friend, so it's not if she'd mind you being around regularly. Mama held up one finger and kept on with the explanation. Of course, it's not the only choice. We've got options. Well, I didn't get a chance to officially ask. I bet the lens would be equally fine if you wanted to hang out at their place. They're good people. I know Mr. Wynn decently well at this point. Plus, their son would certainly extend an invitation to visit whenever you wanted. He's sociable, and I even I can see you're in with him. 
I can also look into election lessons and extracurriculars being offered in town. Ooh, you can do that some days instead of being in the neighborhood. I want to do that. Maybe you would want to take up that instrument or learn how to dance, and I would be able to come get you from there when it was done. The hand finally came down, and that must have been all the possibilities she could think of. I like those ideas. Mm, looks like I don't need to worry. Mom stopped squeezing herself as much then. Still, there's no reason to plan out the rest of our lives tonight. The two of us will figure it out. That was something you'd heard a lot. No matter what you went through, your mom never stopped believing you and her would manage. For a moment, she gazed past you at nothing in particular. Sometimes it felt strange remembering how you were actually there. When all the stuff you had to keep up with stopped and you could just think. Maybe your mom felt that too. She blinked and her eyes fell back on you. Mom smiled. But our neighbors are certainly nice, huh? All six of them. We had a lot of luck out here. More like your neighbors were lucky they got to live next to you. No words were needed for her to understand your thoughts. Your face said enough. With a grin, mom stuck her hands in over her jeans. Now, if you don't mind me changing the subject to an entirely different matter, let me just say it's dinner time. As a reward for my, how much we've done, and because the loaf of bread is out at this point, and also because even if it wasn't, I do not want another sandwich. I'm taking the two of us out. I've heard that the local diner is a gem. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Then there's nothing else to discuss. Food it is. Wait, you had a realization. What about you? <sighs> you wanted your friend to go with you. That'd be so much better. Chu invited you to walk to school with him. You could invite him to something, too. At least if your mama would be okay with it. Oh, and Chu's parents, too. You only just got to this town. It was hard to do anything good when you didn't know anything, and almost everything you had was sealed away in a cardboard box. But having someone to take you out to dinner was an even bigger deal than that. How many kids could do it? Not many. Not many. It cost money. Though, Chu went over to Darren's house, didn't he? But Mrs. Murray said he had to be home by dinner time. Yeah, I'd be totally fine. You grasped Mama's cotton cardigan. It felt as soft and familiar as your old baby blanket. She tilted her gently, pointed down, or chin downwards. You had her attention. Yes, Mistra? Uh, I'm not going to go with you if Chu can't come too. Oh, is that how it is? <laughs> I can't guarantee that he will get to do this at such short notice. However, I at least am not saying no. Let me see what I can do. Good. Standing with your arms folded, you accepted that answer. For now, you wait to see what the results were. Mom hunched over to reach around herself. She never, she was never without her chunky silver cell phone. It had lived in her back pocket for years. The sheet of the paint had nearly worn away, and one corner of the screen was had a snowflake-shaped crack. It, but it only needed to work, according to her mom, anyway. That was probably the same reasoning that made her think this ancient house was any good. Mom managed to. Get the too thick phone out of her too thin pocket. She balanced it in the palm of her hand confidently. With that, nothing could stop her, hopefully. Luckily, I've had Mr. Lin's number for quite a while now. He shouldn't be surprised by a call from me. I'll check if he's free to talk. After a few taps, she brought the phone to her ear and waited. She, shocking to you and her, mom got a response in a matter of seconds. Ah, uh, hello, Mr. Lin. Good evening to you. I'm sorry if this is bad time. Mm -hmm. No, no. Everything is completely fine. Then the rapid conversation came to a pause on Mama's end. Her lips pressed together in silence. Nothing for you to do but wait. If only you could hear what was happening too. Mom thought it was bad manners to share phone conversations with the, unless the person was already expecting that. Privacy was priceless, especially when breaches of trust could get a company sued. It didn't last long. She was smiling again less time than it took to tie your shoes if you were good at doing that. That's wonderful. Oh, but the reason I called is that we were curious if you might be able to join us for dinner tonight. I'm taking Misha out to a local diner. It'd be my treat. Another tiny pause happened. Her grin grew more over the space of it. She even laughed at something. Yes, yes, I can imagine. The fair parents mm -hmm, and chuckled a couple more times. At least you assumed Mr. Lin was in a good mood. It'd be weird if mom was amused by him being mad and then the call wrapped up. Thank you. All right, goodbye. With a sense of finality, your mom stuck her phone into her into its home in her jeans. We're set. Mr. and Mrs. Lin are apparently entirely used to these kind of requests. He had joked that whenever he gets a call on his phone, there's at least a 50% chance it's actually for Chu. Was that why he finished the conversation so fast? Maybe it had to do with his job. Either way, Chu's dad had got stuff done. I'm sorry for Mr. Lin having to lobby that many curries, but it works out for us. That means Chu can come along. 
At dinner with your mom and you, it had happened basically every single day of your life. A dinner at the diner you'd never been to before didn't happen much. But a dinner with you had never happened before. Fine, we can go do it. Mom smiled as you did. We shouldn't keep him waiting. I'll get my scarf. Make sure you wear good shoes. It'll be chilling out there and I'm starving. Ooh, can we change our outfit? Same for you. Your stomach was a huge empty pit. If you didn't eat soon, it might suck you in. You did everything you could do... You think of doing before leaving as fast as you could do it. Then you were braving the unknown in search of a sustenance in your friend. Boyfriend. Ooh, this is pretty at night. Oh. You were outside at night. That was not the same as walking around during daytime. The orange hood street lamps glowed like torches. The formerly orange trees turned into it. An unnatural purple on the tarmac expense of the cul-de-sac could easily be a perfectly still, endlessly deep lake. If you tripped, you could fall in and disappear forever. So cool. Ideas for exciting nighttime games were already filling your head. But you would have to find a way around Mama if you wanted to have that kind of fun someday. You shook off the daydream, night dream, or would night dream be a normal dream? Either way, you focus on not being left behind. You and your mom paused through the gate around your yard, then made your second visit to the pointy red house that day. Mom tapped the doorbell a single time. The sound of it was a speedy ding-dong, and then it was done. Even the Lynn's house got straight to the point. You were left huddled on the dark porch for less than a minute. The one who answered wasn't Mrs. Lynn. It wasn't either of the adults. It was Chu himself. Standing in the open doorway, he was all lit up from behind. That cast harsh shadows over his features. Autumn's face was still amazingly bright on its own like magic. Hey! I haven't seen you in forever. We missed the whole best part of the day. Uh, you hugged him with both arms. And you held on tight. Whoa. <laughs> the sturdy fabric of his jacket crinkled resistantly against your squeeze. His notebook in his secret pocket poked your stomach and the fur encircling his face scratched your nose. But what you noticed was that under all those layers and snags, Chu was a soft kid. He patted your back with gentle rhythmic movements while resting a cheek against your head. You were both quite com comfortable there. I wish you hadn't gone before. <laughs> Chu's hand settled on his hips as he leveled a delighted glance at you. You did miss me cool. <laughs> his gaze lifted high so he could greet your mom too. Thanks for getting me dinner, Miss Rose. Thank you for coming on such short notice. That's nothing. I've got lots of time. I can come over whenever. Good to know. And so everybody invited to dinner was there. Together, you went to the center of the street again. Mom unlocked her car. Chu did not want to take the middle like Tamarack. He scratched his head over you, wanting it, and went right for the window seat. Rapidly, the car rolled into motion. Tree after street post after tree flew past. You couldn't see anything else. Unfortunately, Mom also wasn't sure what she was looking at. She had trouble figuring out exactly where the local diner was. The radio had to stay off. This required the utmost focus. That didn't mean it was silent. It was a silent drive. Uh, Chu sat up tall at the edge of his seat. With quick interjections and wild gestures, he offered his best advice on which road to take and when. Chu couldn't give directions very well. It was wrong or entirely impossible to understand unless you were within his own head. Mom was patient, though she never gave up. In the end, on the outskirts of Golden Grove, he found the place. Chu's cheers and footsteps filled the car when he spotted a massive lit up sign saying the diner table. It had to be what you were looking for. Diner was in the name. Mom noticed that too. She wound the steering wheel to turn into the parking lot, a weary smile playing on her face. The diner table, not the dinner table. Someone didn't get an A on their spelling test. Um, Mom, it's a joke. Really? Yes. Huh, wow. It's always been named that. That doesn't mean it wasn't an accident originally, but it's memorable at least. The car came to a stop under the glow of the building. There were no lamps in the parking lot, but that only made the area more noticeable. Light poured from the front windows larger than they were. It was a beacon of hospitality deep in the forest and high on a mountain. After unbuckling, you each went out. Mom led the, in the way to the entrance. She held the door open and swept out her other hand as if to say after you. Ooh, this is cute. Autumn nights in Golden Grove had such a bite. You felt a comfortable shiver going from the outside of the diner to the inside. It was warm and toasty there and even smelled warm. 
The inviting scent of hot food hit you first when the waft of smoke underneath. You could picture the grill with charred steaks and hamburgers sizzling. And there was coffee too, which somehow always smelled burnt even though it was mostly liquid. Maybe that was why coffee was so dark. Someone found a way to overcook water and other people decided to drink it, including your mom, who never had a morning about without it. Impatiently shifting in place, you craned your necks to glance around more. Who else decided to be there at the dinner table on a chilly Monday? A man in a trucker hat jabbing a knife into a thick cut of ham, three sweater-clad women each with a mug in hand, and some teenagers huddled in a back booth and splitting a stack of pancakes. Mostly, though, it was nobody. Ten times more people could fit, maybe twenty times, so you had a clear view of the room. The diner table was full of different colors. You could list off greens, oranges, blues, yellowish ones, but all of them were darker faded, so it didn't feel colorful. Kind of like if your classroom had grown up and gotten old and sleepy. Um, awesome. <laughs> On your right, Chu stood nonchalantly, slowly shifted his weight from one foot to the other. There was nothing interesting to see there for a boy like him. <laughs> Except for you, he kept smirking whenever, you no whenever he noticed you looking. Soon, a tall lady with tall hair came over from the kitchen to the main counter. She said she was the hostess and would show you to a table. Your mom negotiated for a booth instead. Plenty were open after all. The lady or the woman agreed to those terms and grabbed some menus off the stand. Thank you. Mom let the employee lead from there. From her, it was the biggest treat of going out to eat wasn't the food. It was that she, she, once she was at the restaurant, her work was done. No cooking or cleaning for a change. She didn't have a mom or dad or grandparents around to do that for her, so letting strangers she had to pay to do it was the best she could get. The hostess took you further into the restaurant, past the sweater gals, but not as far back as the pancake palace. She left the pile of menus on the table, thanked you for stopping in, promised your server would be there to help soon, and walked away in a matter of seconds. No, I don't want to sit together. Well, let's get comfortable. Me and Misha will sit together. That leaves the other one for you. Yes, Miss Rose. No, I don't want to sit with you. I don't want to sit with you. Yeah, your mom, you and mom could be right together and you'd be able to look at Chu really easily. Bro, I don't know. That's not fair. Chu paused to take off his jacket before climbing onto the bench. He sat directly in the middle of it. Since it was going to be all his, why not make the most of it? Mom slid into the muted red sea with a color, multicolored geometric pattern across the trop. Then she patted the outer spot for you to take. You got into the booth next to her. There wasn't room anywhere else. Aww. She rested his threaded hands on the tabletop. He leaned forward very slightly, a little bit like an interview. <laughs> Was he going to be asking you questions or... Maybe he was preparing yourself or himself if, if your mom to evaluate his behavior. That was her job, but she didn't know that. This is nice. She spoke quietly while perusing her options. The diner table had unwieldy menus as long as your entire arm. Mom didn't bother holding it upright. Instead, she fl flipped through the laminated pages with the menu laying flat. There was a lamp directly above your booth. It reflected blindingly off the plastic, but between the glare, you caught glimpses of colorful pictures dotted in between the text. Eggs and sausages, French toast dusted with powdered sugar, a basket of chicken strips, ooh, steak and mashed potatoes, a bright green salad, and more. Diner food in its purest form. You're wrapping in a water already. Look, there's a kid section. That'd be a good place to check, though since it's an, a special occasion, it is okay to get, eat, to get any meals, even the pricier ones. What? You were almost never allowed to do that. That goes for you too, Chu. Don't worry about anything. Get whatever food you prefer. Thank you. Any food and treating another kid? Mom was really wasn't a good mood. Did she get a big bonus for moving or something? You can only imagine. But not for long because another person approached your table. Hello, I'm Yusuf. I'll be your waiter tonight. Thank you for coming. Great. Hi. Yusuf had... Warm brown skin and warmer brown eyes, though his hair was a cool black. He kept it up in a neat ponytail. A heavy buckle-strapped apron with a checkered pattern hid his normal clothes, and a short beard covered most of his facial features. It didn't hide his welcoming smile. He held a generic notepad and pressed the pen to it, poised for taking notes. That made you think of Autumn right away. <laughs> you'd, only, you'd only realize as you started staring at him when a smile curled up Chu's face. He probably got why you were looking at him without you needing to say so. You'd been thinking of him and he knew it. That was only fair. Chu thought a lot about you too. <laughs> the secret joke passed and Chu turned away from you to adjust the server. Hey. Huh? Sen 
Since when was he that casual with adults he didn't know? From the way she was with your mom, the one word greeting came as a complete shock. Only to you, though, Yusuf responded in an even less expected way. Hey, this is not the usual company for you. That's right, things are changing around here. You'd forgotten for a second that she knew everybody and everything, even the random waiter at the diner. Are they? Yusuf's eyes narrowed in consideration for a second. Mom got special interest from him, though a different kind. Instead of looking sharply, his expression opened up in wonder. How do you know Chief, I may ask? He's our boyfriend. You may. He, we're his new neighbors. Mom said with a please tap on the menu in front of her. We moved into Golden Grove just yesterday, actually. There was an immediate shift in the man's attitude. He took the pen from paper to instead fold his broad arms. Talking to a server or someone behind a counter was really different than talking to them when they weren't working. Probably because when a person was doing a job, everything they were meant to say was decided by a boss or a whole giant company. And all of a sudden, it seemed like Mr. Yusuf, the waiter, had clocked out. Welcome to town. Can I ask your names? Ah, uh, sure. I'm Opal Rose. This is my daughter, Mishka. Thank you. I am Mr. Keon Yusuf. I also live in Golden Grove. He recited an introduction exactly the way Chu would have wanted him to. Well, besides spelling it out. Mr. Kian Yusuf might have questioned how you knew Chu first, but you were wondering the same thing about him. He lifted the notepad in front of his chest, returning to being a waiter. Can I get you anything to drink? Just water is fine. Yeah, you could have said that for her. It didn't matter how big an occasion it was. Paying for drinks at a restaurant was still going too far. Hmm, then let me rephrase. What I mean to say is, please get a drink. It will be on the house. Oh, no, you don't need to do that. I know, but I would like to do it. I'm only feeling as a server tonight. I'm allowed to make those decisions. Even when insisting on something, Mr. Yusuf had a gentle way of putting his words. He could have been the narrator for a storybook. No problem. We are all neighbors in a town this small. Chu nodded along and even gave a thumb, thumbs up. They were, they were in cahoots. Was this was was there some kind of secret welcome committee in Golden Grove and was everybody a part of it? What harm is there in being hospitable? Hospitable, hospit, hospital. I don't know how to tell you say that. So that was you'll be seeing often. If you want to return the favor, come back another day. Well, you make a good point, Yusuf. She was being honest. Your mom would have told him if he was saying nonsense. Only reasonable arguments could be tolerated, and mom was practical, not a stickler. If you're sure, I'll have a cup of water and mm, a root beer, extra ice. I haven't had that in years, and I feel festive. Mom's newly chipper mood was contagious, and Yusuf gave a ram rumbly chuckle. It's a festive day, is it? Uh, I can imagine you're celebrating in your home. I can add a scoop of ice cream to that. She boggled at Yusuf and his many sweet suggestions, though it was with a smile. There was no reason to go through the process of, of accepting a kind gesture again. Mom embraced it wholeheartedly. A root beer float it is. Root beer float. <laughs> he repeated her words as he wrote them down, speaking even more softly than before. Whoa, your mom. A person who had never even ordered anything more exciting than a water with a slice of lemon for your entire life was going to get a root beer float. Having it confirmed that drinks would be free brought new life to Mr. Chu Lin. He continued to put Yusuf in a separate category from other adults. No best behavior required. The gloves were completely off now, just not literally. He leaned over on one elbow and put on the accent and voice he used whenever he talked about Baxter. Waiter, give me a hot chocolate and I want whipped cream and chocolate syrup on top. After how indulgent Yusuf had been with mom, Chu's request was met with a flat skepticism. Chu returns Yusuf's stare with a million dollar smile it was easy to act like you were a rich person when nothing had to be paid for mr yusuf put a hand to the table and lowered himself towards the younger boy like it was some kind of no negotiation and in a way it was i will give it to you but the powder will be stirred into water water is he lactose intolerant your mom blake and stammered that was new to her it was news to you too yusuf stood tall once again he told the fact straight he is Mr. and Mrs. Lin only let him have hot chocolate occasionally because of that, and only when it's made with water. You were lactose intolerant, too. It would have been humiliating if you'd been the only one who had to deal with that. Good thing Chu had it. They may not be here in person, but I will still follow their wishes. Fine, you can make it with water. You just witnessed an incredible downside of being so well-known. Everybody was aware of what you weren't supposed to be doing and called you out on it. Though Chu was a compos composer, not a quitter. Can I still have the whipped cream? That's the most important part. Chu squeezed his hands together. The person at an interview pose morphed into a pitiful beggar act. His big shot, rich guy attitude sure hadn't lasted long. Yusuf remained calm in the face of such pleading, merely scratching his hairy chin. 
Because I respect your parents, I won't give their son a full cup of milk. But, but because I'm not your parent, I can look past a bit of whipped cream today. Yeah, thanks, uncle. <laughs> oh my god. Hot chocolate secured. Chu smoothly transferred his tilt from his right elbow out towards the world to the left, the one inward to the table. He's not my real uncle. Kitty knows just get to call him that, like how Tamarack's Omi is everybody's granny. Really? Mm-hmm. You got a new granny and now you might have an uncle too? He was already offering presents. Your small family of mom and you is getting a whole lot bigger. Wonderful, you should get something fun. It is the first day of school. That, that's its own reason to celebrate. Now, what do you want, Mishka? Just remember your parent is here and she wouldn't want you to get anything with too much milk either. Lactose intolerant as well? Exactly. I'll keep that in the back of my mind then. Even if Mishka finds her way here without you, I won't serve her milk. Really, I would appreciate the assistance. Oh, come on. You blew out a sputtering breath. You didn't even know this guy and he was already trying to make your life difficult. As you can see, I need it. You too, huh? That's a bad club to be a part of. Oh well. Sorry kids, but you should go on me, Mishka. There's plenty of op options. Uh, you told the waiter what you were thinking yourself. And what you said was... Is there beer? <laughs> well, what is Chu having? Oh wait, didn't he want like... I want hot chocolate. As long as it's mostly water, that wouldn't be too bad, all right. A hot chocolate. He had a few follow-up questions about toppings and that all got sorted. After, after a nod, Yusuf transferred the pen to the same hand that held the notepad. He delivered them both. I'll return shortly with your drinks. Please take a minute to browse the menu. He left you there, leaving with wide, purposeful strides. Mom watched him walk away. Small town hospitality is a real treat, isn't it? You quietly glanced through the meal options. During that time, the man who had the ham and the hat left. The ham was gone, he still had the hat. Then Yusuf reappeared to serve a round of drinks. You put in the diner dinner order before he left you to enjoy his gift. And it was awesome. You chugged your hot chocolate, wondering if you'd get a refill if you finished fast. Probably not. Mom would say no. Chu knocked his mug of chocolate with gusto and got a whipped cream mustache for it for his effort. Your mom savored the once in a decade root beer float as slowly as possible. She didn't care if the ice cream melted. Nothing was loud or fast or busy at the diner table. A person pretty much had to take it easy in a place like that. There was no other, other way to be. When it arrived, the main course tasted great. Your grumbly stomach was grateful for that. Chu stuck to grown up appropriate conversations over dinner, like what you learned in class. There were a lot of things ki kids could only talk about with each other. Mom shared all about her day, including an exciting story about how she thought there was a mouse in the master bedroom. But after catching it underneath one of the moving boxes, it turned out to be a larger than normal heap of dust. She insisted the bad light lighting in there could have fooled anyone. And then the food was gone, sort of. Uh, you're, you were able to finish every bite. Your mom didn't. Mom hardly touched half of the size that came with her home-style meatloaf. She planned to take them home to add to her lunch tomorrow. Chu stepped himself. He left not one crumb or, or a single drop. The plates that were empty got stacked and used napkins were piled on top. Your mom made sure the table was as neat as a mess of dirty stuff could be. Now, a tower of dishes caught your waiter's attention and Yusuf approached your booth once more. He always had something in hand when he stopped by. This time it was a frayed fox leather, leather folder. Yusuf placed it on one table. He got a better look then. In gold letters across the top, it said thank you. He'd brought the check before mom needed to ask for it. Hello, I hope you enjoyed your meals. They were wonderful. Thank you for asking and thank you again for the drinks. Mom's praise brought a grin to Yusuf's face. The local waiter toyed with a buckle on his apron, straightening it like a Medal of Honor pinned to his chest. He's our cover... He'd serve this com oh my god, he'd serve his customers well that night. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. You pay at the front. Sure, I'll handle it. Oh, and can we get a couple to go boxes? Yes. That's great. One more question. Mom lowered her voice in an exaggeratedly exaggeratedly strained whisper as though people on the next booth over were secretly listening to the conversation. The diner table? She had seriously not let that go. Is the pun on purpose or did someone miss an end? Grimacing, Yusuf glanced over her shoulder. He shared her pain and her concerns about being heard. I would not have chosen that if it had been up to me, but yes, that is, this, that is the intended name. Huh, there you have it. You were right, Mishka. That's all. Thank you for your gracious help tonight, Yusuf. We feel extremely welcome. Glad to hear it. Good night, everyone. 
Uh, you better leave him a good tip, Mom. Yusuf offered one last friendly smile, then took the pile of dishes and two cups off to the kitchen. Could you stand up for a minute, dear? I need to get past. N not without some hesitation, you scoot out of your seat. You'd been having fun and it was practically over. Mom had a few words as she got to her feet. Stay in the booth while I'm gone. I'll come right back and then we'll pack up the leftovers and head home, okay? Yep. <laughs> Bye! Now I get a low time with him, finally. She left in the opposite direction. Yusuf had gone. Her footsteps were muted thumps against the thin carpet. You had the booth to yourself then. None of the grown-ups were left. When she was sure that he'd abruptly stretched himself farther across the table. Poised like he was ready to pounce. I found the stuff. And that was as long as he could hold a straight face. Chu erupted with laughter. I can't believe you broke into my backyard again. Um. Did you like it? It was pretty cool, especially the free candy. Thanks. Aw. Wait, I want to see. Frozen embarrassment. Okay, it's the same thing. You deserve something nice. Really, huh? It was pretty cool, especially the free candy things. Okay, yeah, I like that one. Chu sighed softly, and the padding stopped. He had returned to peace. No! Full and warm and sleepily, you felt every second of what you've been through lately. You've done so much and met a lot of people. How did that hap How did that much happen in only two days? It was unbelievable. Oh. You drooped to the messy table, resting your chin against it. Gravity had gotten too hard to resist. Keeping your head up was no longer an option. Your drowsy gaze wandered towards the window in the night, dark night beyond. There had been nothing in the parking lot besides the diner and not even lampposts. You hadn't looked at anything in particular, but it was raining. That you could see. Water streamed down the glass pane. Some point between when you'd walk from the car into the diner table, the first sprinkle of fall began. You'd always love the rain. It was never too much. Relaxing, relaxing even more, you stared absentmindedly at the black panel. Every, each time you opened your eyes after a slow, heavy blink, the pattern of droplets clinging to the ring window changed. There were an endless orange and red and yellow gold leaves and gold in the groove, but that wasn't everything striking about the current season. The weather with thick gray clouds that showered the world was just as important to the core uh, autumnness of a place. When you thought of fall, the picture in your head was of leaves and drops of water falling, and it had arrived. You'd arrived too. When your family wanted to go out to eat, you went to the local diner and the waiter there treated you special because you were a local. When you needed to leave, you had a house with a room that was all set up and waiting for you to go back to. When tomorrow came, you continued your studies as a student at North Acre Elementary School. You were in room 24 with Mrs. Murray for the teacher. When you saw your neighbors, you'd know who they all were and you had friends. And you were going to be in that place for the rest of autumn. You'd still be there... You'd be there still for winter when the new year came. Seasons would be coming and going with you in Golden Grove for you weren't sure how long. What you did know was that this, every moment of it, was now your life. <gasps> oh my god! There's a moment! <gasps> 